Okay, so this video is a beginner-friendly Vim tutorial. I'll be getting rid of misconception and talking about how Vim is extremely extensible and useful. And okay, I'll be talking about NeoVim here. So when I say Vim, I really mean NeoVim, but I'll say Vim for simplicity, simplicity's sake. So make that system link in your head. Okay, let's get into it. So the reason I say Vim is the most useful text editor in the world is because one, it has this thing, it's a modal text editor. And modal text editor basically means there are two modes. There's an insert mode where your keys insert text onto the, the file. And there's a normal mode where your keys don't insert text, but they actually move around. So in normal mode, the keys you use to type will actually do different things instead. And the cool thing about Vim is you can switch between these modes in less than a second. So I'm in insert mode here. I type something. I go to normal mode. I go to the start of the line and I make it a comment. There's just an example. And okay, I'm not going to get into the key bindings here. I recommend you search a Google cheat sheet and you just see what the bindings are and you get used to them in about a day. It takes about a day to get used to these basic key bindings, like moving, yanking, copying, uh, pasting, deleting, insert mode, normal mode. And another cool thing about Vim is it is highly configurable and extensible. So in Vim, there are standard key bindings, but you can change all of that, which is what I have actually done here. So for me, I made it so that in insert mode, if I press the keys KJ, it actually goes to escape. And this allows me to go back to normal mode without having to hit escape, which is a harder key to press. And okay, I'm not going to make this like a Vim key bind tutorial because that is ridiculously simple to learn. You just you just Google it, bro. I'm not trying to say, ooh, just Google it or like just search it on the internet. But Vim key bindings, you'll get used to it in uh, in an afternoon. Okay, just keep a cheat sheet next to you on a web browser and just use Vim a little bit. And next thing you know, you'll be fast as fuck. I'm fast as fuck, boy. And okay, now let's talk about Vim being configured and extended. So I'll just show you a lot of things you can do with Vim. Because many people think that it's just a text editor from the terminal, ooh, terminal, right? They just think it's some terminal application that cannot do anything, like these high-end bloated IDs, like, ooh, VS Code, Tech Studio, Sublime, Te all those editors are fucking trash, okay? I'll show you why Vim is better, because it's minimal and you can extend it. So to all those fucking haters who say, oh, you can't do anything on Vim, okay, I'll give you a really cool example. Look at this, this is the R programming language, and this is actually a plugin I got, and look at that. It interacts with the R console, and I can actually execute commands. So if I press leader D, it'll do things like print the head of the data, which is an R programming language command. I can even plot stuff here. Look at that. This is an IDE. This is like R Studio, but with NeoVim, and a lot more minimal, and just a lot better. And okay, let's take another example. Many people think you have to use Overleaf for LaTeX, but you just don't. You can just use this extension called VimTech. So, okay, look, compiler stopped. I'll close that. Okay, leader LL, compiler started in continuous mode. Look at that. These are the scripts for my YouTube videos, right? I can use Vim key bindings in this. Okay, I can, I have my own color scheme, all that good shit, right? Vim can do a lot more than just edit text, okay? With plugins, you can do virtually anything. And I'll show another example of what you can do. I press leader and look at that. This is the, the file manager thingy from, from VS Code, right? They have that fucking file thingy on the side. Well, guess what? Vim has that too. This is another plugin called Nurtree, which you can get. And look at that. Now I can go through my files and shit. Press leader and I close that shit. I can make new files and whatnot as well. And another thing is people think Vim is like dumb or whatever. But the truth is you can get completion engines on Vim. You can get Conquer of Completions. That's the one I use. And you can get snippets in Vim. I'll show an example of that here. Look at that. It's a snippet with tab triggers. I press tab. Right? You can have snippets in Vim as well. It's not just some terminal text editor. It's way more than that. And so, okay, now you may be asking, okay, said, so how do I get all this extra functionality? And to that, I say plugins. Okay? Vim can be extended by plugins. And because it's FOSS, there's actually a huge plugin market on GitHub itself. This is where most of Vim plugins and extensions are. And I'd recommend using a plugin manager, actually. Native package management is not that good. You cannot lazy load. So okay, forget about all that. Let How to install plugins. Okay, so first, I recommend getting this thing called Vimplug. How do you get Vimplug? Well, you could go to the GitHub page and you could just look at the instructions 
and you could just blindly copy the command they tell you here. But you see, I'm against that. Do not blindly do things. Understand what the fuck is going on. So if you actually look at this command for a second, you'll realize that, oh wait, look at this. This is the directory where the thing is being installed in, dot local share. This is the directory that's being created, and this is the exact file that's being copied. So if you look in here, you'll go the link master plug dot vim. Vim plug is actually just one vim script, which is about 3000 lines of code. It's one vim script file. This is vim plug. And you don't actually need, you can actually put it in your dot config slash autoload. Look at that. This, I'm going to press I to open it in split. This is vim plug. The same 2000 whatever lines. Okay. You don't need to just blindly follow. If you wait and understand, you'll realize what the fuck is going on. All right. And you'll actually learn something. Stop taking technology for granted. People understand what the fuck is going on. All right. And now after that, then you can just blindly follow instructions, I guess. So because this is a Lua programming language, I have to do this thing called Vim CMD, which basically lets you write Vim script in Lua. And Vim script is basically the configuration language of Vim. Okay. Now again, I'm not going to sit here and explain what every single one of these lines does. You can just, you can use chat GPT to explain that shit for you. Go to chatgpt.com and ask it what the fuck all this does. Okay. Just boom. There you go. Uh, more resources than ever. And what you can basically do is you can have plugins and customize all sorts of functionality here. And because you are actually writing commands here, you can get exactly what you want in a GUI interface like R studio or tech studio or whatever the fuck you are limited to using the options the developer has given to you. But in Vim, you can literally write your own options or your own settings. You're not limited by anything. So let's take, for example, the Vim tech plugin. This is how you get it. You, you just write all this down. Vim CMD, let G plug home. This is where the plugins will be installed. I like having everything in my dot config directory. Call plug begin. And then you just put this shit in with the same syntax. Is following syntax hard? Uh, not really. I don't think so. You just have to type shit correctly. It's not really hard. I don't understand why the terminal puts a lot of people off just because there's some syntax involved. So th this is an example of me editing my key bindings, right? Look at this, Vim key bindings. The, I changed the leader key, local leader key. I explained this KJ stuff before. And so the reason I'm making this video, I understand that this is not an in-depth step-by-step Vim tutorial. This is more or less to show you what you can do with Vim and to hopefully put you on a journey where you figure out how to use this stuff on your own because I'm going to be honest with you it's not that difficult as long as you have the right mindset of not blindly copying things that you just see in a video or even a github page for that matter if you just slow down and take a few steps back and actually investigate a little so with chat gpt you can get any question answered if you take this command and you put it into chat gpt it will tell you what the command does you don't even have to scroll through forums or wikipedia pages you can just <laughs> i asked chat gpt to help me write a couple of shell scripts you can just put shit in chat gpt look at this what does this command do it'll tell you what the fucking command does you don't have to this stuff is very easy, people. I don't know how else to say it. You, all, you have a search engine, which will take you to a page, which will tell you exactly how to do stuff. Not to mention you have advanced artificial intelligence language modules that can communicate in human language extremely well. Uh, like I said before, ChatGPT is like a programming language to human language translator. So I hope I've explained some stuff in this video, and I hope I've explained some useful stuff. I understand this is not an in-depth tutorial. Please don't rate me in the comments. But yeah, this stuff is quite easy and learning this stuff can happen very quickly. So I'll show you Vim Cheat Sheet. Just search up Vim Cheat Sheet. Okay. And you will become familiar with all of, okay, maybe not all of them, but like the, the, you just look at these a little bit and then boom, cursor movement. There you go. You will get familiar with all of this. Okay. Maybe not all of them. You'll get configured with the main ones in one hour or in 10 minutes for the cursor movements. Then you'll learn shit like editing, replace, replace okay i don't know what join is you don't you get the point you will learn what you need to learn in about an hour and then you'll get extremely competent with it in about a week right visual you know what i mean shift the test text yank it delete it switch uh, you can even switch case that's pretty cool i didn't know you could do that right even i don't know a lot about vim and the configuration i understand the configuration can put a little bit of people uh can put people off and to that i simply say you don't need to google stuff that much you don't, you can watch YouTube videos, but I'd recommend, yo, you just have chat GPT. 
just use this advanced or you can use chat GPT alternatives. The point is things are ridiculously simple for you these days. You're not in the 1980s where you have to go to a Linux conference to learn how to do stuff. You have a Wikipedia page where everyone has ran into a problem you have run into before and come out with a solution. All you have to do is find that solution using a search engine, which is really easy to do. Right. Learning Vim, not that hard. You just, you just keep a cheat sheet. And then you just force yourself to use it for about 10 minutes and you're going to be flying. You're going to be flying in 10 minutes. That's how easy this stuff is. And the reason I made this tutorial somewhat unstructured, the reason I kept jumping here and there is because that's how learning is supposed to be. Learning, when it comes to building these kind of things, kinds of things, doesn't really have a structure. You kind of go, okay, what do I want to do? Okay, let me figure out how to do that. There's no chapter one, uh, cursor movements, chapter two, init.lua. This is not how learning actually works. It's more or less, this is practical learning. You just go, what the fuck do I want to do? Okay, how do I get that done? Okay, this is how I get that done. And that's kind of what I'm showing you here. There are many videos on YouTube that explain stuff. I'd rec instead of watching them, I'd recommend you watch them and you learn from them instead of copying them uh, frame for frame or character for character. Just understand what is happening. And yes, I'll make more videos in the future explaining each and every one of these commands even, if that's what it takes. Because I believe understanding instead of blindly following is far superior. Okay? Because once you understand something, you can do exactly what you want. All right. So now you know how to use Vimplug after watching this video. You know where to install stuff. You know how to use the syntax and you know what plugins to get. After this video, you know how to install plugins. You don't need to watch a guide on how to install a plugin. You just go to whatever plugin you want and then you'll automatically know how to install it through the use of this syntax. All right. You pay a little bit of attention. You'll know that this is lazy loading. And okay, I've ranted on for enough here. I'll make more videos about this, but the point is this stuff is easy. Please do it, guys, and stop being lazy and stop taking technology for granted. Thanks for watching. Bye.